Hello, my name is Uma, and in this video, I'll be talking about the top programming languages and frameworks that I found worthwhile to learn in 2021. Let's get started. Before we get into the list, I want to state that the languages and frameworks that I'll mention are in no specific order. One isn't better than the other one, and depending on your specific use case, you may want to pick one over the other one. The first one is a language that is used by a lot, and I mean a lot of frameworks. It's JavaScript. JavaScript is used in web applications and web browsers. It can be used on the client side with frameworks like React, Vue.js, and Angular, and on the server side using Node.js. Speaking of frameworks, I mentioned React, Vue, and Angular. They are all JavaScript frameworks that are very popular and good to have in your arsenal. They are similar in that they are all component-based and use JavaScript, but still have their differences. They are used in most web apps you see today, and companies like Uber, Airbnb, Facebook, and many more have reported using these component-based JavaScript frameworks. The next language is Python. Python is simply a powerhouse. It is a high-level general-purpose programming language that can do anything and everything. It is used in developing web applications, server-side applications, automation, data analysis for artificial intelligence, data visualization, and a lot more. It can be structured as an object-oriented programming language or as a scripting language. It is simple, easy to learn, and straightforward. It might not be the fastest language in terms of pure performance, but it is fast enough for everything that doesn't need to be fast. Hence, the go-to language. It is definitely worth learning right now. The next framework is any of the various cloud services. I don't have a preference for any specific one. I have used all of them and they're all pretty good and offer very similar, if not the same services with just different names. The top players in the market right now are AWS, Azure, and Google Cloud Services. Amongst other services, they all offer resources that are used to deploy and maintain your application. Gone are the days of buying server racks and servers to deploy your applications and working out redundancies, backup, networking, and all that stuff. They handle all of that for you. It is definitely a good one to learn because companies are leaning more towards having developers build and deploy their applications. Some companies even hire engineers that mainly focus on these cloud services and provide backup as needed. Google Cloud Services also has a wide range of APIs that you can take advantage of, like maps, places, traffic, and a lot more. These come in really handy when you're working on personal projects. The next frameworks have to do with mobile app development. There's two ways you can go with mobile apps, and that's native and not native. Native apps are built using technologies that are specifically designed for one system like iOS or Android. Native Android apps are written in Java or Kotlin and native iOS apps are written in Swift or Objective-C. If you write a native Android app, it'll only work on Android and same with iOS. Non-native apps on the other hand are different and are built to run on both platforms. They are broken down into three. One, hybrid apps, which are basically web applications packaged in native containers using technologies like Iconic, and Apache Cordova, so they can be downloaded as mobile apps. Two are cross-platform frameworks like React Native, Flutter, and Xamarin, where the code is written in one language and compiled to run on both iOS and Android. And three are progressive web apps, which are still new. They are basically hybrid apps, but offer a broad set of native OS controls. Now, which one should you learn? It depends. I have worked with native iOS and native Android, and they definitely have their place in today's society. Companies hire Android engineers and iOS engineers all the time. Nothing beats the feel and performance of the native app on the native operating system. I have also worked with cross-platform systems, and they're pretty good as well. I swear by Flutter. I have developed and released an app using Flutter, and it was definitely a good experience. I would suggest playing around with the native systems first before going into hybrids like Flutter and React. Google Firebase is also a good resource for mobile apps. It's a one-stop shop for authentication, storage, database, activity functions, notifications, and a lot more. And it integrates seamlessly with mobile apps frameworks, including the native and non-native ones. The final framework is Git. It is used for version control and code sharing. It's been the one constant at every development job that I've had. I also use Git for my personal projects as well. Some companies may not use GitHub, but they definitely use Git. They are two different things, but whenever someone says Git, everyone thinks of GitHub, so might as well learn and work with the both of them. Git is definitely here to stay. Those are the top languages I have for now. Some honorable mentions are Java, C++, Go, and Ruby. Those languages are very useful and have their specific use case. Remember to pick the language and the tech stack that is best for the project that you're working on at that time. Technology is constantly evolving, and we have to keep up, otherwise, will be left behind. That's it for this one. Thanks for watching and see you next time. Peace.